Do you ever have one of those days where you pick up your saxophone and it does this? <laughs> Nothing's working! Ah! Drives you crazy. The good thing is, it's easy to fix. And in this video, we're going to show you a couple of quick ways that you can get that sort of problem fixed in no time. <laughs> G'day Nigel Lee from Sax School. Well today we're going to talk about one of the most annoying things that can happen on your saxophone. If you pick up your saxophone and you can't get any sound out of it at all, it can happen when you're practicing, it can happen at a gig, it drives you absolutely mental. But the thing that's happening is normally a problem with the octave key and it's easy to fix, which is the good news. And to help me explain to you how to fix it today, I've got my mate Steve Crow, who is one of the top repairers in England here and he's the guy that looks after all my saxophones actually. Now, I bet you see this sort of thing a lot, Steve. Every day. Every day. Every day. How do we go about fixing this, Steve? Is it pretty easy to fix? Very straightforward. Right. Right. There's three positions uh, that you can check for, for, uh, for, for the octave mechanism. So the first one is, if you look at the key on the crook, it should be sat down onto the first octave pipe. And this is not. Okay, so you're talking about the, this top octave key here. So if with yeah. nothing else pressed down on yeah, the saxophone, nothing. it should... It should be closing down on that tone hole. What do you call that? The octave pipe. Octave pipe. Oh, that's very posh. Yeah. It should be closing on the octave pipe, and this isn't, so that's that's a problem. Yep. So um, what I would do is, is I, I, I position the crook to where you would normally uh, play, and then to decrease the C shape to, to, to so that I can get the key to sit down, I would normally put my first fingers my left hand, right hand, on, onto the top of the key, and my thumbs, I will put my thumbs underneath and just squeeze slowly. Well, wow, so you're literally just squeezing it so yeah. that it bends down a little bit. Some, some keys are harder than others. This is quite soft, it's quite easy to do, but some salmas are a bit harder. Um, the chances of breaking that key, I've never broken one. That's um, interesting, yeah, wow. So. Would you say like a, a vintage saxophones are oh more brittle or hard does it is that a thing yeah the older the, the older ones tend to be a little bit harder um cons are easy uh, okay. really old ones but uh, but selmas are um the mark sixes uh sevens are quite uh strong you know quite hard okay so basically you're just getting that and you're squeezing it down so now i can see now that that without touching anything yep that's down now the second position uh you've got to check for so we, we know that the, we know that the pad's sitting down onto the, the octave pipe on the crook now, the, the second thing is a lifter, which is if I just take the crook away and we can see this little um, piece of keywork here, normally it sticks on the Yamaha as it's level, it's, it's, uh, it, but on most instruments it's stuck above uh, the, the top of the instrument. But this is called the lifter, and when you play the octave key, it just moves backs and forwards, and this is what uh, lifts the octave key on the crook. Okay. So when you put the crook back on again, and you got it in your playing position, there should be, without anything played, if you just engage the touch piece uh, for the octave, but very, very slowly, and you'll see the lifter moving forward, and you should have about a millimetre to a 1.5 uh, mil gap before it actually picks up this key. So I'm gonna move it forward now, and it's moving, moving and now it's touching, and it does actually lift the key up. Oh wow, so okay. all you're doing there is pressing down the octave key at the back it. here. Nothing else, yeah. And then it's slowly the the lifter, is that what this you called it? This is the octave lifter. The yeah. octave lifter is moving forward and touching the the round part of this octave key, and then it's engaging it. That's oh, right, okay. and, the, and the, the space between the two keys gives the octave key enough breathing space, so we know that the, the, that the pad's sat down properly on top of the on top of the crook. If it's actually kissing, if it's touching, then we're not too sure whether that pad's seating properly or not. So does that mean you need to maybe bend it a little bit further? A little bit further. If you go too far... Well, should I test it like that yeah, first, just to make that, sure? Yeah. So, you know, I trust you. You're an excellent repairer, so I'm sure it's gonna work, but... Okay, so, so uh, everything's working back like yep. it should be now. Okay. Okay, so if you if it went too far, let's say okay. it's your first time adjusting it and you bent it too far what's going to happen right so now if uh, if i press the octave key slowly again if you watch the lifter the lifter's starting to move forward just here well yeah. it's a long way away now yep yeah. and it's and and now the the octave um touch piece is touching the body yeah the lifter it's not even touching the key yes so it's not even it's not even opening <sighs> at all so if you just try that now so the bottom register is fine 
So as soon as I get up to the octave C, yep. none of that is going into the octave that it should be in. That's correct, because so the, the octave key on is the crook isn't this key. Right. Yeah. Okay, so is that the opposite yep. to fix then of what we did before? Can you yep. show us how you do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my fingers underneath um, the octave key like this, and I'm going to push down with my thumb a little bit so now you're just bending it and opening it up. Yeah, so it's like okay. a C, it's like the letter C, and you want to close the C down or open the C up. Okay, cool. That's all you're doing. So now would you just do that check that you did before to make sure you got about a millimetre in there? Yep, so I'm just going to touch the, I'm just going to operate the, the touch piece with the octave key slowly, and it's starting to move forward. There's two millimetres gap there. It would still be okay with two mil gap. I would be a bit more comfortable with it, maybe 1.5. Is that because you're a perfectionist, Steve? <laughs> Probably. So now, uh, if you, I'm going to engage the octave key again slowly, and it, there's less less gap there now. And it's actually, you can see the little movement there okay. before it touches this key, and then it does lift the key. The third test is then to engage to engage everything on the left hand, mm -hmm. right, and then engage the octave key as well, fully down. Okay, so you've got all the left hand keys down, B, A and G, and then the octave key. Yeah, and the octave key. So everything down on the left hand. And if you look at this same lifter, you should be able to move the lifter a little bit. Okay. So we know that there's still some free space between the lifter and the octave key. So we know that this, this is still being allowed to sit down right. on the octave okay. uh, pipe on the crook. Okay, Steve, so I bet there's certain things that people do with their saxophones that cause this problem. What are the things that you see people do most commonly that cause an octave key problem? This. <laughs> oh, yeah, just manhandling yes. it? Ah. So I put the hand around the, the octave mechanism, which, which, which can uh, uh, bend uh, the hinge rod that fits through the centre of the key, and then they also get the crook and the... Uh, the uh, ragging it off. Well, well, when they're trying to take it off, yeah. and also or when they're picking the saxophone up. Yeah, um, sometimes people will, um, I just hope this crook serves, but they'll pick the instrument with the crook. Ooh, yeah. I'd never do that. Yeah, no. See? See. You I'll know, it's so. funny, right? 30 years of playing saxophone, it's never happened where the neck's fallen out of the saxophone, but I always think about that. So I'd never pick it up. You've probably seen that happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but the safe way um, to put your crook on, I'll just take this off now, but is. You, you need to hold the, the, the instrument needs to be held properly so that you're not going to strain any keys. The best way is put it under your arm, whichever, yeah. which, if you're left handed or right handed, it doesn't matter, but put it under your arm, yeah. put, your, put your hand around the bell, and then you've got all the, key, you've got the body safely to your body, and, and lots of contact, and it feels solid. Right. Then you get the crook, make sure that your crook, uh, your, your, your tiny screw's uh, undone, and then place your crook in. If it's tight, a little bit of grease around the, around the tenon. Um, don't, don't struggle with it and then just slowly feed it in until you, you until it's right to the bottom and then nip it up. Ah, that's it, that's job Yeah, done. awesome. So basically you're not putting any pressure on no. any part of the saxophone. And the opposite, when you're taking it off and just put your, the whole of your hand around the crook like this and not, you know, uh, just, just, just carefully and slide it out. Seems like a really obvious thing and yet the reason that so many people have problems with the octave key is because they're doing this thing the wrong way. That's correct, yeah. Should I have a go at that now and just make sure yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay, so perfect. So I could then crack on with the rest of my practicing or if I'm on a gig I could finish off my gig. It's such an easy thing to fix that, I'm really glad you showed us. And I think that technique of using two hands and bending it down or, you know, stretching it out makes it really, really simple. It's important as a saxophone player, I think, to have a bit of an understanding of the mechanics of your instrument and to be able to quickly and easily identify issues like this because it's going to get you out of a spot. It's going to make saxophone playing more fun as well. You know, you don't want to be in that situation where you really do some practice and it's just not working for you or you're on a gig and uh, things are not working. But things like this, once you know them, you can get back in, in business really, really easily. So I hope that's been useful to you. If you uh, want to find out more about Steve, check out the link below this video. Steve Croke, amazing. I think he's he's a great guy and he does some really interesting stuff with your con conversions, don't you? We yep. need to talk about that in another video. Um, also, if you want to find out more about Sax School, you can join the thousands of other people that use Sax School every day to improve their playing. That's over at mcgillmusic.com and there is a 30-day trial you can get started with at the moment. And also, if this is your first time here, please do subscribe because we're making new videos like this all the time and they're videos that are going to help you to improve your skills on saxophone. So, keep practicing hard and I'll catch you next time. 
And I bet you see this sort of problem a lot, right? Yeah, very, very, very lot. A very lot, <laughs> a big no, lot. <laughs> <laughs> often. Okay, often, okay. 